Hi, in this lecture we will be talking about yoga and its role in stress management. The compilation has been done by Ms. Neha Kumar, treasurer of Uttarakhand chapter of National Association of Palliative Care for Ayush and Integrative Medicine. According to yoga, stress is experienced when a person is exposed to a situation which demands specific results requiring active effort. Stress thus causes wear and tear on the entire system at all levels, including the body, mind and consciousness. If our recuperative powers are able to regenerate the loss created and improve on the earlier capacities, then such stress now termed eustress can be beneficial. However, if the stress places such demand on the system that damage and hence impairment result, then such stress is known as distress, which is harmful in the short as well as long term. This stress can originate in the body, mind, intellect, emotions or psyche. Depending upon the nature of the stress, it can lead to imbalances in the koshas and culminate in a cancerous process manifesting on the physical level. Yoga aims to increase our recuperative capacities, thereby increasing the threshold of conversion of eustress to distress. Various yogic practices help in preventing and managing cancer effectively. Modern medical studies have proven that stress has a strong impact on the genes, genetic behavior and also on the mutations taking place in the genes. Studies have shown that chronic stress has a negative impact on health and on neuroimmune apparatus in general. Newer research is underway to isolate the direct links between stress and cancer. Such studies have shown a great deal of promise, but need more verification before firm conclusions can be drawn. No research is indeed to bring home the fact that stress is a part of our lives. How we can handle that stress has an impact on our health every day. We hear more and more about the harm it may cause to our minds and bodies from anxiety attacks to heart diseases. Evidence is accumulating that there is some link between stress and developing certain kinds of cancer as well as how the disease progresses. Multiple studies have measured the impact of stress on our immune systems and ability to fight the disease. At Ohio State University researcher Dr. Ron Glasse, PhD found that students under pressure had slower healing wounds and took longer to produce immune system cells that kill invading organisms. Other studies have gone so far as to show that women who experienced traumatic life events or losses in previous years had significantly higher rates of breast cancer. Every day our bodies are exposed to cancer causing agents in the air, food and water. Typically our immune system recognizes those abnormal cells and kills them before they produce a tumor. There are three important things that can happen to prevent cancer from developing the immune system, can prevent the agent from invading the first place, the DNA can repair the abnormal cells or killer T cells can kill off cancer cells. Stress and cancer in physics, the concept of stress is explained as the ability of an object to withstand an external deforming force. For example, if a block of concrete is subjected to a crushing force, the molecules of the block exert an equal and opposing force from within to counteract and nullify this external force. Depending upon the capacity of the block of concrete and its innate structural strength, this internal force increases in direct proportion to the external force. 
until the threshold level is reached. If the external force increases beyond this, the block of concrete develops cracks and will be crushed. Frequent application of similar multiple stressors hastens the wear and tear of the block of concrete wearing it down. In case of humans and stress, stress has a similar effect on living beings. However, many more factors come into play due to the fact that humans are capable of repair and regeneration as well as having the ability to adjust, adapt and modify themselves and their responses to the stressors. Stress in humans can be defined as an event or circumstance either external or internal which exerts a potentially deforming force in the internal environment in the body mind. The individual responds to these stress forces and carries out specific activities in an event effort to maintain homeostasis, constancy of the internal environment. Stressors and their responses can be classified as externalized that is projected into the external manifest world or as internalized that is operating on the internal mental and psychic plane. Stresses can be classified as dietary or nutritional, occupational, interpersonal, mental, disease process or environmental. These are cumulative in nature and when added up sig can significantly reduce the capacity of the individual to face disease and to overcome it. Stressors act by instigating a series of neurohormonal changes in the brain and body. As a result, various hormones are secreted which bring about behavioral changes in the body. At the same time, the brain function also changes and it starts directing the body to act in a different manner. External and internal stressors operate in the same manner, which means that for the purpose of cognition and response, there is no essential difference between them. The mind responds in exactly the same way to an external stressor force objective reality as it does to the stressor force arising from thoughts and images in the mind subjective reality. The degree of threat perceived in both cases is indistinguishable. The same neurotransmitters are involved in a coordinated sequence of responses from the body mind. These neurotransmitters jump start coordinated sequences of responses from various body systems in order to ward off the stressor in stimuli and maintain internal homeostasis. The well known fight or flight reflex is just one of the many mechanisms operating in the body for this purpose. The result of stressful stimuli can be summarized as 1. Stimulation of the immune system. A high alert is sounded and the immune cells act as if a foreign body equivalent to a threat to physical existence has entered the body and prepared to fight it. However, with long term stress, the immune system is actually weakened. Increased sympathetic nervous system activity involving the whole body, a state of hyper arousal in the neural pathways leading to an increase in blood glucose, release of brain chemicals and hormones that lead to an increase in blood glucose, increase in the metabolic rate and cell repair and regeneration mechanism. A stressor acts upon the body mind apparatus and extracts a response. The body learns from this experience. A memory of event is created and is stored in the mental hard disk where it can be referenced for further use. This event has a bearing on the response of the individual should a similar event occur. When the same stimulus occurs again, the body mind is thus primed for a response. The body mind can become conditioned to produce a particular response to a given stressor. In this way, over a period of time, associations are formed and can result in an almost involuntary automated response to the same event or to any stimulus perceived by the mind to be associated with that event. Even 
if the specific response is no longer appropriate, the automation continues and forces the individual to respond in the same manner. Such stressors cause a biochemical sequence of events to occur in order to elicit the necessary response. Repeated and continually stressful events leave the body mind in a perpetually alert state and result in the repeated expression of particular genes associated with the stress re response. The genes orchestrate each event in the body by processing and forming specific appropriate proteins, example enzymes or hormones. Stress is an important evolutionary force in the life of an individual, providing opportunities to expand one's capacity to deal with life at the physical levels as well as on the mental and emotional levels. For this to happen, however, there needs to be appropriate spacing of the stressor stimuli so that the shortcomings exposed by each stimulus can be examined, analyzed and worked upon. This is a process of assimilation, regeneration and growth. This process is maximized when there is a balanced attitude towards the situation and the person is able to make the mental effort at introspection. This enables reaching an understanding of the situation at its entirety rather than reacting according to the preconceived notions or someone else's advice. Finally, the most important aspect of responding to the stressor stimuli is implementation of the decision that has been arrived at. As we have seen, carcinogenesis occurs due to genetic mutations which transforms the normal cells into cancerous cells. The possible mechanism of the contributory effect of stress in carcinogenesis are briefly outlined below. Exposure to recurrent episodes of stress of varied origins includes specific patterns of cellular activity so that specific protein molecules needed to respond to the stress are produced. This may cause changes to supporting structures of DNA and possibly erroneous copies to be made. Some of these variations could give rise to the genes with oncogenic potential and may also affect the cancer suppressor genes present in the gene bank. As seen earlier, activation of oncogenes and or inactivation of cancer suppressor genes are implicated in the beginning of the process of cancer formation. The body's responses to the stressors are very simple. For the body, the stressor stimulus is a threat to survival. Ensuring survival is the highest priority and the body has many emergency responses. That is, it activates to achieve this purpose. It is akin to defending a country against enemy forces, a do or die situation. At these times, it is suggested that the body's normal checking circuits may be bypassed to achieve immediate survival. This bypassing could create a loophole through which genetic mutations are tolerated by the body. Stress and the hormones released by the body to quell the stress have a blunting effect on the immune system as far as cancer surveillance and cleanup is concerned. White cell numbers increasing during the short term stress, but long stress weakens the immune system. This proves to be a shot in the arm for the cancer cells. They opportunistically take advantage of the chance to progress and multiply with minimal resistance to their activity. And in this way, the cancerous process can take root in the body. Stressful situations are fraught with extremely powerful emotional stimuli and can bring up a host of feelings within. Not all of the feelings are considered appropriate and such may be suppressed. Emotions and thought patterns have corresponding neuropeptides in the body mind. Ongoing emotional trauma or painful memories will cause neuropeptides to be produced. These neuropeptides continue to cause stress for the whole organism. The crucial question is how to avert stress and thereby cancer. There are many ways to counter stress. Yoga has been 
shown to be one of the most effective, harmonious and simple strategies to counter stress. As beginning about all the required changes in an arduous task, an integrated approach of yoga and conventional medications can be adopted. This combination can work wonders in managing cancer. The medications take care of the present tumor, while yoga as lifestyle may help prevent further occurrences and assist conventional therapies in managing the tumor. Thank you.